Now that we know how to draw bond line structures, let's, let's apply that skill to draw some structural isomers. So what are, what are isomers? Well, iso means same, and meros means parts. So um, isomers would be molecules that are made up of the same parts, meaning the same, the same number of atoms, right? So if I have a, a molecular formula C5H12, if I, could draw, if I could draw two different dot structures that have the same molecular formula, I could say they are isomers of each other. And those two dot structures would, would differ in how those atoms are connected or differ in terms of their structure, which is why we would call them structural isomers of each other. The other term for this is constitutional isomers. So sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll see textbooks, uh, most textbooks today would probably call call them constitutional isomers. I prefer the old term, the old term of structural isomers, because to me it just, it just tells me a little bit more about what type of isomers those molecules are. So let's, let's see what we can do here. So five carbons. So if I were to draw just five carbons in a line, right, that, would be, that would be one possible dot structure. Right? So if I just, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and double check my hydrogens here. Right? So I have my five carbons like that. And if I want to know how many hydrogens, right, we've learned how to do that in the last few videos. So I need three bonds here, two bonds here, two bonds here, two, and then three. So if you add up all of those hydrogens, right, there's three plus two plus two plus two plus three, you get 12. So, the molecular formula for pentane is, is uh, C5H12. And, and so this is one possible dot structure that has that molecular formula. Let's see if we can draw another, another dot structure that, that also has that molecular formula. Well, if I, if I took off one of these carbons here, then I'd be left with four carbons in a chain. And I could, I could put that, that extra carbon, you know, wherever I want. Let's, let's, let's try putting it right here. Let's see what that does. All right, so what do I have now? Well, I still have, I still have five carbons, right? So let me put those in there. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see if I still have 12 hydrogens, right? So on this carbon, I'd need three hydrogens. All right, on this carbon, I'd need two. On this carbon, I'd need three. On, on this carbon here, Right where the other carbon is branching off of it, it has three bonds to it, so it needs one more bond. So there's one hydrogen connected to this carbon, and then this top carbon here, it needs three like that. So if I if I count up my hydrogens, right, there are three here, three here, three here, so that's nine, and then two here, so eleven, and one here, so that's twelve. So this dot structure also has the molecular formula C5H12. So I can say that these two molecules are structural isomers of each other. The same molecular formula, but they differ in how those atoms are connected. They differ in terms of their structure. Let's uh, let's draw another molecule. Let's see if it is a structural isomer of these guys. And since I, you know, I, I took this carbon and I just arbitrarily put it on this carbon. Let's let's see what would happen if I if I took that carbon and put it over here instead. And at first you might think, oh, this this is a new this is a new structural isomer. But in reality, in reality, these are the same molecules, right? If you just flip one of these, if you flip this bottom molecule up and and turn it over, you'll see that it is the same thing. So these two are not structural isomers; they are the exact same molecule. Let's draw another one. So I, I had one branch in my previous example. Let's, let's take off two carbons and see if I can make two branches. So if I take off two carbons, right, I now have three carbons there. And I could take those two carbons I took off and just stick them right there on that carbon. And, and let's see what happens there. So, um, so let's just redraw that real fast. And let's identify all of my carbons. Right, I have four carbons and then a central carbon like that. So how many hydrogens, how many, how many hydrogens does, does this molecule have? Well, uh, each of the carbons around here has three. And if I look at the carbon in the center, it already has four bonds, so it doesn't get any hydrogens. So we have five carbons, and then I have uh, four times three hydrogens, so 12 hydrogens here. So this also has the molecular formula C5H12, and this would be the third structural isomer um, that we could draw for this molecule. So that's it, a total of three structural isomers that all have the, the chemical, the molecular formula C5H12. So these are all hydrocarbons or alkanes.
And we'll, we'll get into nomenclature of alkanes um, in future videos. So uh, let's do another. Let's do another example here. Let's do the molecular formula C3H8O. Okay, so we we've already done we we we've already done example of this. Um, we we had three carbons in a row here, and then our previous example we we went ahead and put an OH group on our central carbon there. So if we wanted to number our carbons, all right, we could say that's carbon one, this is carbon two, and that is carbon three. So we have an OH group coming off of carbon two, and if we expand that out a little bit, we can uh, we can double check to make sure that we have the the correct molecular formula, right? So there are three carbons here like that. And then hydrogens, right? There would be three hydrogens attached to this carbon, three hydrogens attached to this carbon. My central carbon here, it has three bonds, so it needs one more. And then don't forget about this hydrogen on the oxygen. So how many hydrogens is that? We have three here, three here, so six, seven, eight. So we have eight hydrogens, three carbons, and one oxygen. So this is two propanol, and, and this is one possible dot structure that has this molecular formula. Let's see if we can draw some other structural isomers. Well, I had the OH group coming off of carbon 2. Let's, let's take that OH group and, and let's see if we can uh, put it coming off of carbon 1. And let's see what that will give us. So here's my OH group coming off of carbon 1. So if I go ahead and number my carbons again, right? this would be my first carbon, second, and third like that. So. So now I have now I have this as my as my dot structure, and let's uh, let's label my carbons right. I know that's a carbon. I know this is a carbon. I know this is a carbon. What about hydrogens right? Well, this carbon on the right it needs three more. This carbon on top needs two. This carbon needs two, and then don't forget about that hydrogen. So we have three plus two plus two plus one. So once again, eight hydrogens, one oxygen, and three carbons. So this is these two molecules are structural isomers of each other. So we have. Uh, we just drew the structure for one propanol, and then up here we drew two propanol. So they only differ in terms of how the atoms are connected. Let's think about, oh, I could, I could, let's, let's, let's see what happened if I put the OH group coming off of this carbon three here, right? So if I, if I went like that and I went, oh, I could just put my OH there, and I'd think, is that a structural isomer? And of course, the answer is no. This is the exact same molecule as that, right? You could just flip this molecule and, and you would get the same thing. So we did not have a new structural isomer drawn there. Let's let's try to draw one more. Let's let's see what we could do. Um, I can't really branch this guy like I did in my previous example. I can't really have one of the carbons branching off of something else. I don't have enough carbons for that. So the only thing I could do to draw another structural isomer would be to break up the carbon chain. So instead of having three carbons in a row, let's see what happened if I if I put in an oxygen in there to break up my carbon chain. So if I went like if I did something like that, right that. That breaks up my carbons. Let's let's draw out what I have there. So I have now I have two carbons here, and then the oxygen, and then another carbon over here. So let's let's draw some hydrogens and see what we have. So I have three hydrogens here, two hydrogens here, three hydrogens here, and you know I could I could put an octet on my oxygen, and 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 you know it it has an octet there. It's not going to have any hydrogens on it. So what is my total molecular formula here? Well, my molecular formula would be three carbons, how many hydrogens? So three here, right, three here, and two here. So there are eight hydrogens and one oxygen. So this is yet another structural isomer. Um, it has the molecular formula C3H8O. What about what about if I said okay well I tried to put the oxygen on one place I and let me see if I can put the oxygen like you know over here and let's see what that would give us well once again these are the same molecules so I did not draw a different structural isomer so uh, so we have a total of three structural isomers that have the molecular formula C3H8O. Uh, we can't do any branching. We already tried that, so we're all out. And these three structural isomers, you'll notice they look a little bit different from each other, right? And I was kind of going ahead and naming some of them. I called the first one 2-propanol, and I called the second one 1-propanol. And the last one is called uh, ethyl methyl ether. So these are these are different functional groups. So this guy right up here, 
this guy right here, I called it, I called it uh, two propanol. So it is what we call an alcohol functional group. This guy here, I called one propanol, also an alcohol functional group. And then this one down here, this last structural isomer, I called that uh, ethyl methyl ether. And and so these two, these two right here are alcohols, and this one is what we call an ether. So we need to learn about the different functional groups, and that will be the next video. There are many, many functional groups to learn, and it is extremely important to understand them for the rest of this course.